Hey everyone, this is a quick follow-up video spurned on by a thread on Reddit on Dana White's recent post, The UFC Guy, on his own extended fasting journey and an all-too-common question on why some people take calories when they fast, and the seemingly militant responses that some people have that if you have any calories at all that you're somehow ruining your fast. So I thought I'd address this huge misconception about fasting and go into both the biology and the recent research so you can understand what stops autophagy, what you should actually care about when it comes to breaking a fast, and a mindset shift that'll hopefully help a lot of people with their fasting journeys. I hope for my American friends that you're all having a fantastic start to the Thanksgiving long weekend with your friends, families, and loved ones. And for those new here, my name is Joe Guevara and I analyze the research behind fasting, nutrition, fitness, and longevity. I won't do a long sponsor spot here, but if this video helps, hitting that like and subscribe button helps us a lot, and feel free to check out my sponsor, Canadian Protein, and if you catch this video over the long weekend, they're having a pretty amazing Black Friday sale right now, and I've just stocked up on my own grass-fed New Zealand whey protein isolate, and they have 30% off that with a ton of other sales, so definitely check them out. With that, let's get right into it. So... Let's start with that thread. It was around the stories of Dana White promoting extended fasting, but also drinking bone broth at the same time, and the OP asked, what is the benefit of using this stuff? It breaks a fast, right? Would they not have gotten better results with not using it at all? And some of the initial comments then quickly said, no, they're not doing fasting. And on an absolutely technical and semantic level, sure, they're not fasting. Why? Because the definition of fasting is simply not consuming any calories whatsoever. But here's the doozy of a question for you. Does that actually matter? Let's take a look at the biology first, and then the evidence. There's really only two main categories of people who do extended fasting. One, people trying to lose weight, who can also do the same thing through exercise and calorie restriction. And we've gone over the research in our fasting science series on why fasting is usually superior to both of these in isolation. And number two, for health reasons. You're trying to stoke autophagy, clear out senescent cells, renew and redevelop your immune system, brain health, stem cells, and a whole host of other exciting things that happen only during fasted states. And from what I understand, Dana is in this camp, who by the way, was spurned onto this by Gary Brecka, who deserves a whole series of videos analyzing so many of his own claims. But back to the topic at hand. If you're trying to lose weight or trying to get health benefits, does having bone broth during an extended fast limit or prevent your goals from being achieved? And frankly, that is the only question that matters, not whether it technically breaks a fast. So for this, let's take a first principles approach. We know that it takes time for you to get into a fasted state. That's why extended fasting and autophagy is usually only seen at effective repair levels during at minimum 36 plus hour fasts. The longer you go, the more effective the process. So let's say you drink some bone broth, which usually has some sodium or electrolytes, some protein, usually with conditionally essential amino acids like glycine, and maybe some micronutrients from the herbs and whatnot. So if you drink this, does it completely reverse 36 plus hours of fasting that you've just done and you're back to resetting your fasting clock to zero? No, a fasting state is a spectrum. Just as it takes you time to get into it, it takes time and energy to get you out. The level you go into or out of fasted states happens all the time. That's why you can get autophagy benefits through both calorie restriction and exercise, because you're essentially triggering a fasted state as you burn off glucose and reducing insulin for a smaller period of time. Extended fasting simply accelerates and amplifies this so that your body has time to ramp up those new hormonal pathways to levels you can't get with just reduced calories for exercise alone. This means that the reverse is also true. Having a cup of bone broth that maybe has what, like 50 calories, 100 calories at most, will break your fast, but for such a small amount of time that those autophagy processes that are ramping up might go down a little bit as you spurt a little bit of insulin, amino acids, and glucose into your bloodstream, but your body will burn off all that up just like that, and autophagy will continue to increase. As a quick rant, this is actually one of the biggest pet peeves I had when a scientist influencer who promotes fasting, Dr. Rhonda Patrick, 
was saying when she was interviewing, I think it was Dr. Longo or Sachin Panda, that drinking green tea goes against fasting because it was, quote, xenobiotic, which one, doesn't actually mean what I think she thought it meant, but two, why does it matter, Rhonda? So that all sounds great and logical in principle, but what does the science say? Well, the largest extended fasting study looked at 4 to 21 day fasts at the Buchinger Wilhelmi fasting clinics in Germany, analyzing 1,422 subjects. And the intervention was a choice between complete water fasting or up to 250 calories of nutrition per day. Not only did the study show that the health benefits between both cohorts of completely fasted and up to 250 calories were similar, but they found unsurprisingly, better sustainability for longer fasts with calories than those without. These are very similar protocols that are being used in chemotherapy research to limit its toxic side effects based on Dr. Walter Longo's studies. You can learn more about that in this playlist, along with Dr. Jason Fung's protocols here in Toronto in his own metabolic fasting clinics. So as you go into the long weekend and start considering doing an extended fast yourself after too much turkey or stuffing, Hopefully this shifts your mindset a bit when it comes to fasting so that you can focus on what's actually important. Are you achieving the goals and effects you're aiming for and doing it in a consistent and sustainable manner, which is what actually matters. Instead of holding on for dear life on the semantics of what the dictionary definition of what fasting is. If you are planning on doing some sort of fasting or if you want to support your overall health and longevity, trying to lose weight or just want to stay up to date on the latest health and science research, Give this video a like and our channel a subscribe to help keep this kind of content coming. This is Joe signing out. Have a fantastic Thanksgiving long weekend and I'll see you all in the next one.